its medicine. And the push to legalize pot has an interesting new adversary, California beer and beverage distributors. The trade association just contributed $10,000 to stop Proposition 19 from happening. Proposition 19 would make smoking and possessing marijuana legal under California state law. Voters will decide in November, on November 2nd, to pass it or not to pass it. But this raises a question. Is marijuana really worse than alcohol or vice versa? What's going on? So we, let's talk about it with uh, Roger Salazar. He's from the Public Safety First. That is a group that received the 10 grand from the California Beverage and Beer Distributors. Uh, the distributors declined our invitation to come on the program. We also have with us Mason Tavert uh, from Safer or Safer Alternatives for Enjoyable Recreation, part of the coalition to pass Prop 19. Thanks both of you gentlemen for joining us tonight here on CNN. So Mason, when you heard about this beer group's uh, contribution, what was your reaction? Well, listen, every objective study on marijuana has concluded it's a far safer substance than alcohol. And clearly what we're seeing here is that the alcohol industry is trying to prevent competition. They realize that marijuana is the next most popular recreational drug after alcohol, and they want to ensure the booze keeps flowing and the pot does not. And it's really unfortunate because what they're doing is they're driving Californians to drink when they might otherwise make a rational, safer choice to use a less harmful substance. Okay, so Roger, why did California beer and beverage distributors give public safety first $10,000? Did members tell you? Well, listen, I think, uh, I think Mason's making a little bit of a jump here. Let's keep in mind that the beer and beverage distributors are the folks who deliver uh, be uh, beer and beverage uh, you know, products. They're the truck drivers, they're forklift drivers, you know, they're the, the warehouse workers. You know, these are folks who have traffic safety and, and, and employee safety issues first and foremost. The fact is, uh, under Prop 19, uh, there are no, uh, you know, there, you know you, you're, you're, you're allowed, you're not allowed to smoke marijuana while you're driving, but there's nothing that says you can't smoke marijuana right before you get behind the wheel. So that's a safety concern and there are also concerns uh, from the employer side about testing uh, you know under this initiative it, it creates a protected class for marijuana smokers and basically says that you cannot uh, uh, test for marijuana and and or, or fire a worker unless you can prove actual job impairment so those are uh, some new legal well, hang on, uh, thresholds hang on, hang on. aren't those the same rules meet. aren't those the same rules as alcohol I don't see anything different that you said about alcohol no, because you create what you do under Prop 19 is it creates it, the Prop 19 says that you cannot discriminate against people who are participating in uh, or who are using this product uh, under this new law. So it basically creates an extra protection for marijuana you, users, which doesn't exist you for and, alcohol and, users. And, and, I think once so here's the thing: once a law goes into effect, if it does, if Californians vote and say yes on uh, to marijuana being able to use marijuana right. legally, then some sort of standard would have to be put in place, like alcohol for when you're doing well, maybe, the breathalyzer but a, but or what have maybe. you. So, so what's the difference? So I don't understand. It seems like that the, the point is moot well, because it hasn't happened yet. It's not moot, though, because that doesn't exist. And, and again, under this initiative, it's, it specifically omits any definition of what constitutes under the influence of marijuana. There is no definition under here, so you'd have to create something new. And again, what, what, uh, what this uh, initiative has done is it, it basically leaves it up to, ev to 536 different local and county jurisdictions to create their own separate rules. So you'd essentially have utter chaos into trying to figure out you know, how you exactly you enforce any of the rules that are set up. All right, sir, go ahead and respond to what he said. Well, yeah, I mean, we got to, you know, with all due respect to this gentleman, he is a political consultant being paid by the booze industry to protect their turf. And, you know, I respect the fact that um, he's involved in this fight. But, you know, this group is calling itself public safety first. Why on earth would they prefer to keep alcohol as the only legal drug in the mix here? And with regard, you know, Don, I think you make a great point. Um, marijuana driving is going to be illegal it's going to be illegal to use marijuana while you're on the job employers can continue to fire people but what this gentleman's job is here is to raise doubt and to scare people and you know he's again being paid by the by the alcohol industry so we really need to consider where this information is coming from and we also need to consider the fact that you know this gentleman mentions all the jobs that are created by the alcohol industry these are all jobs that could be created by the marijuana industry as well and at the same time we're giving Californians the ability to use a substance like marijuana that doesn't contribute to domestic violence and sexual assault and uh, overdose deaths and all the other problems that alcohol contributes to. Yeah, I'm not saying that either one, that it should be legalized or what have you, but as uh, uh, someone who's come from a family where, um, where there is alcoholism, I think that, you know, if you abuse any one of them, they are bad. Everything in moderation, everything in moderation. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate you joining us on CNN. No problem. Thank you.
Thank you for having us.